Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we are going through 2022's external exams in Queensland, Australia with a question on bivariate data and it's a complex, unfamiliar question. Doesn't matter where in the world you are, if you're studying bivariate data, this applies to you. Let's get straight into it. It's a question worth five marks, that's 5% of the paper. So it's a fairly big chunk, important to be able to attempt this well. In a company's first 10 years of operation, the average annual profit, Y bar with the bar on the top, which is the mean, average, was $9,660 with a standard deviation, SY, of $3,010. Fitting a least squared line to the data comparing annual profit of Y to the years of operation X produced a correlation coefficient of 0.9987, so our value for R. Show that the predicted profit to the nearest dollar for the company in the 11th year of operations was $15,121. So there's a lot going on in here, lots of key information, very challenging to work out where to go with this. So firstly, we've got to work out a predicted profit. That means we've got to come up with the equation of the line, the least squared line, in order to make a prediction or to use a prediction. So to develop that, we're gonna use the formula y equals a plus bx. Um, so this is a formula you need to memorize. So far of our formula sheet, we've got a little bit of information. We've got a formula here to work out the gradient or the slope. So we've got here r multiplied by sy over sx. We're gonna be using that part of the formula there. And then to well, that will help us to find b. And once we've got b, we can find a then we've got an equation we can work with. So we've got some information here. They've given us the value of the mean of y. They've given us, so that's this one here. They've given us the standard deviation of y, that's this one here. And they've given us r, our correlation coefficient. So the question is, if you don't know what sx is and you don't know what the, the mean of x is, how on earth do you work this out? Um, so we've got to take the information we've got, we've got to go somewhere with it. And that's where it gets a little bit challenging, a little bit unfamiliar for people. So we've got all that information, let's work out what to do. Well, we can find the, the mean of x, as well as the standard deviation, as we know the data sets for years of operation x. Now, this isn't super tricky, but a lot of people would have stopped here and go, well, I don't know what x is, how do I find what x is? Um, well, we know it's the first 10 years of operation. When we do a time series and we use a least squared line, we type in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 into our calculator and then we develop the equation out of that. So that's where the complexity and the unfamiliarity of this question comes in, is recognizing that the first 10 years, that's that key information right there. They are our x values. We can actually use that on our calculator, plug that in, divide by 10, we get a mean of 5.5, that is x bar, that we're going to be using in our formula to find a later on. Now we need to find the standard deviation. We can also put that into our calculator as well to find the standard deviation that should say of x. Okay, so if you're not sure how to use your calculator to find the standard deviation of x, every calculator is a little bit different. We do work this out in previous videos, so jump back and have a look. But in a nutshell, you're going to be using the standard deviation function, which is part of your mode button on your calculator if you're using a Casio. You're going to then put in um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then you're going to use your, um, your other buttons on the statistics button that's down with the shift button. And you can do that for univariate data because when we're looking at one data set, that's univariate data. So we find that the standard deviation is 3.02765. Alternatively, you could pull up your formula sheet and work it out very manually. That would take forever. Don't recommend doing that. Okay, now we've found Sx and the mean of x. We can now um, work with our formula and find the equation of the line. So actually working out the standard deviation and the mean was worth one mark. So hopefully you got those ones right. Okay, so we've got those variables. Let's find A and B now. So we start with B. We're going to substitute in our value for R here, our value for the standard deviation of Y, which was given, divide that by the standard deviation we just calculated, and our value for B will be 992.8779. And I've rounded that off to four decimal places there. Okay, let's substitute that in now. We've got the mean of Y, we've got B, and we've got the mean of X. So let's put that into that next formula. 
and we got a mark for getting B. I'm guessing we're going to get another mark for finding A in a minute. So let's substitute that in and we've worked out A is equal to 4199.17. There's our third mark for determining the value of A. So now we've got an A and a B. We can simply use our equation now, Y equals A plus BX, to substitute in 11 for our 11th year and work out what um, the predicted profit is. So let's substitute that in. And then we're going to multiply x equals 11 here. <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of people get confused and think that's plus 11. It's not. It's multiply. So let's multiply that in. And we've worked out it's $15,120.83. But to the nearest dollar, when we round that up, we get 15120 So we've actually proven it and shown that the predicted profit to the nearest dollar is $15,121. And that was our fifth mark. Well, it was a challenging question. And rounding that to the nearest dollar was very important that you were able to do that for the last part. There was also a mark here for showing logical organization communicating the key steps. That little mark there isn't on every question, but being able to show you're working in a clear way, explaining what you're doing is really important. So you'll notice here, for example, I've used um, correct symbols, I've done correct rounding, I've explained what I'm doing, you know, I'm going to substitute. You didn't have to write a whole sentence, you could simply write sub x equals 11. Um, little things like that show the marker that you know where you're going with this question. I would guarantee you a lot of people didn't really know where they were going at the beginning. A lot of people probably would have stated some variables at the beginning and possibly stopped there just not knowing what to do with them. And that was the tricky part, knowing that time series, it's a time series when you've got um, time on the x-axis and profit on the y-axis. So understanding that time series can also use a least squared regression line is an important thing to remember. Well, did you find this helpful? I sure hope so. And if you did, here's some way you can engage with me further and also with our channel. You could like and subscribe, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, tell us in the comments how much you enjoyed the video. And if you've got any questions at all, comments is not the best place. It's hard to explain in a small space, but Mass at yahoo.com is a great place to ask any questions that you've got. And if you just want to have a rant about how much you hate maths, ah, I'm open. All these. <laughs> well, thank you so much for watching again today. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.